My full name is Lisa Karen Yon, L-I-S-A-K-R-A-R-E-N-Y-O-N. Um, we always had dogs and usually other assorted pets, fish and actually chinchillas uh, when I was growing up and uh, had a lot of interaction with horses. Um, so I was always definitely always interested in animals, um, although I used to be quite faint at the sight of blood, so I didn't think I could be a veterinarian. Um, it's a combination of things, um, and it's, it's a very unusual position actually. It's a, a joint position between the vet school and Twy Cross Zoo. Um, and it's involving teaching and research um, in both locations, interestingly. Um, and it's sort of a, a melding between the two institutions and, and a melding of the two different aspects of the job. So I give lectures on exotic um, animal medicine, um, well exotic animal anatomy and physiology right now because we've just got first and second year vet students going through so we're still giving them kind of the foundations um, before they'll, they'll reach their clinical years. And as well designing research projects for the students and um, developing um, ex exploring opportunities for students at other facilities so that they can get um, clinical experience and husbandry experience in, with exotics and wildlife and also um, arranging research projects for the students to do um, at the zoo and exploring the possibilities for them to do research projects at other facilities as well. Um, and so that's the, the student and, and educational side of it. Um, and in addition I'm also um, in the process of um, establishing research projects at the zoo and at the vet school, probably in involving colleagues from the collaborating with colleagues from the vet school, but working mostly with animals uh, at the zoo, but also in other locations um, on a number of different research projects. The best parts. There are a lot of best parts actually. Um, there's a tremendous amount of variety, so it's no days ever the same. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's very, it's very intellectually stimulating. Um, and there's one of the joys, I think, of, of academia is that we have a lot of flexibility in the research questions that we choose and pursue. So we can really pursue our own interests. Um, and I, I think that that's a fairly, fairly unusual thing to have that kind of flexibility and that opportunity to really focus in on, on what most excites us. So I think that's probably, there are a lot of great things about the job. I think that's probably one of the best. Um, the worst is probably the administration side of it, uh, the, all the paperwork and the you know, things that have to be filed and of course trying to get funding for the research. All these exciting research projects need, need money and there's only a limited amount of funding out there and there's a lot of competition for it so that's, um, that's a difficult part of the process. Oh, that's a difficult question. I mean I have some vague, I think and one of the things that really attracted me to this job is I'd like to have an impact on the next generation. I'd, I'd like to help to shape the sorts of attitudes that our vets are going out with in terms of working with wildlife, working with zoo animals, and what's possible. I think, I think veterinary training is a tremendous, tremendous foundation for so many things. Obviously for clinical work, work working as a, as a clinical veterinarian, but I think that the training is also really, really helpful as a background for doing research because <clears throat> it gives you it gives you foundation in so many different areas of basic science. <clears throat> in terms of my own goals, obviously my love is, is working with wildlife and my passion has been working with elephants. Um, oh, pie in the sky, if I could ask, you know, what would I like to do? I would love to make some kind of discovery which would help us to better understand and therefore ultimately be better able to manage our elephant populations. Um, I think they're amazing animals. Having said that, um, I have kind of the same goal for, for most of our wildlife. If, if I made some kind of contribution to our understanding and our ultimate management of, of, of wildlife, um, whether it's captive wildlife or free-ranging wildlife, I'd feel like I'd lived a worthwhile life and had a worthwhile career. Um, well, I think they understand that I teach at a vet school. Um, and might well understand, okay, I sort of deal with the wildlife and exotic species end of it. So uh, I think that that's fair enough. In terms of the research, um, I, I think it's, it's extremely difficult to explain the, the kind of research that I do. 
um, it tends to be fairly focused. I mean, I can say, okay, I, I look at different diseases, and that's um, probably as much detail as I would, would be inclined to go into uh, with, with non sciencey people, um, and probably as much detail as they're interested in my going into. So that's fair enough. And I explain that, okay, we're, we're teaching vet students and giving them exposure to zoo and wildlife animals, and um, that's, that's probably about as much as I'd give them. I don't know what a stereotypical scientist is because there's, it covers such a wide range of, of people, from people doing lab work and molecular work and cell-based work to people doing field work um, outside all day in, you know, in, in, in situ, um, you know, overseas. So I, I can't say that there is a, I mean, a stereotypical scientist, somebody who has a quest for knowledge, I suppose, somebody who wants to understand some question. Um, am I typical in that way? Absolutely. No doubt about it, yes. <laughs> I forever want to understand the underlying mechanisms, why things happen. Um, sure, I'm married, have a, a young daughter. She's uh, 15 months old. Um, so I'm quite new to, to being a mum as well as uh, my career um, in academia. Um, hobbies, um, back when I had the, the time, um, I very much enjoy um, uh, scuba diving and horseback riding. I particularly enjoy dressage. Uh, I enjoy bicycling and hiking um, and I enjoy reading and used to enjoy playing the piano as well. But um, unfortunately right now for most of these hobbies I haven't had much time. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's exciting. It's very exciting, but it is a lot. Um, and sometimes it's a bit hard to feel like I can keep my head above water. <laughs> Tomorrow is special because um, our dog will be joining our, rejoining our family. Um, she's been in Canada for the past six months, uh, waiting for the six-month quarantine waiting period after her rabies vaccination, rabies titer and microchipping. Uh, her name is Gabriella, or Gabby for short, and she is a rescue from an elephant camp in Thailand where I was doing my research prior to coming here. And she was um, a small puppy, starving to death and covered in mange when we first met her. And um, basically she adopted me as I was working at the elephant camp. She'd just followed me around and she'd sit under my chair. And she actually decided that I was in danger from the elephants. And so one day she actually faced off against one of the elephants. Um, the elephants, because rabies is a problem in Thailand, in, in the dog population, the mahouts, the elephant handlers, actually train the elephants to, um, to strike out at any dogs that come nearby, they try and chase them away. And so the elephants are quite aggressive towards dogs. And so an elephant came up uh, to use the station where I was seated and saw the dog, her, Gabri Gabriella, seated under my chair and started trumpeting and, and got very excited. And Gabby decided that she needed to protect me from this elephant because she decided that I was being threatened. And so she immediately faced off against this elephant and she was standing squarely in front of this elephant, barking, and this elephant was trumpeting and actually rearing up on its hind legs. And Gabby, this little eight kilogram terrier cross, did not back down. I think she has no idea how small she is. So she's got a very, a very stout heart and she's a very, very sweet dog. She's come a long way, a long way since her days as a stray at the elephant camp. And, uh, is a very much loved member of the family.